dolls have been a passion of mine for most of my life. Until I had children, I dressed my dolls as if they were my children. I am intrigued by the lifelike faces dolls have. To me, each doll has its own personality and I make clothes that will enhance that particular doll. Sometimes I even catch myself asking my dolls which color fabric they would prefer. Amy Ryan is here today as our doll dressing guest. June Mellinger is also here to share wonderful sewing machine techniques, including Pico and monogram embellishing on a baby's tea bonnet. Today is already special because you are here with me. Let's start sewing. This incredible little bonnet is a boy bonnet, and sometimes those are a little hard to find. The technique is pico pin tucking, and it's really fascinating. Now, as you can see, this adorable bonnet is very, very tailored. It has on the front a woven rickrack. These are the pico pin tucks, and I bet some of you are wondering why we call this a tea bonnet. Well, let me just turn it around and show you. It's actually shaped like a tea. So the back part has a slit on each side and it comes down and then there's uh, a little ribbon that ties on the side and this is what a tea bonnet is. Now the Pico pin tucks are very interesting. First of all on your fabric you'll need to mark the center of the piece of the fabric because you're going to start pin tucking in the center. All right the Pico pin tucks go all the way down the center and actually on either edge. Now that a uh, woven rickrack is a very interesting technique and what you do, you take two pieces of rickrack and you just won't believe how magically when you pull them together you can weave, you can weave the rickrack and then that is stitched on top and the tea bonnet right here is the whole tea bonnet. Let's see how this wonderful bonnet is made. I'm so happy to have as my guest today, June Mellinger. June is Director of Education for Brother. June, welcome to the show. Hi Martha, how are you today? <laughs> I'm just great, we're glad you're here. Thank you. It's an adorable bonnet. Now tell our viewers exactly what you did for that. Well, it really is a lot of fun to make something like this because you get to use the different feet in your machine and you're very creative and like you said, something for boys. So this particular item, again, we mark the fabrics clearly so that we know exactly what we need to do. We created the pin tucks. And if you'd like, I can show you how to do that. Would you like me Let's to do that see. right now? Of course. Let's see how to Let's do that see. right now. Now, a little technique that I have is that I do a little stringer or a little trail tail of the uh, thread to begin with. That way I can kind of pull that through the curve of the pin tuck. Now, when a pin tuck foot has a little curl in it, and um, as you pull it through, the machine, actually the feed dogs of the machine do the work for you. And there's a, I put red thread in here so your viewers can see this. There's a zigzag stitch that's actually curling the pin tuck for you. And it really is intriguing. And you know, you don't want to get your pin tuck foot mixed up with your narrow hammer foot. They're two different feet. The sole of the feet is much, is much different. This one handles that zigzag stitch for you. So with a machine like this, we have an automatic scissor. I'm going to press the button, and here we have the Pico Pin Tuck foot. Pico Pin Tucks. And that's folded. You fold yep. it each I time folded it you... slightly as I, uh, I, when I was sewing. Before you stitched it. I gave it that nice right. one. It stands up now, very nicely. Obviously, this is red, but <laughs> it's OK. <laughs> So that was how we made this. And as you said, the tea bonnet, this is really a perfect item for this because you've got those pin tucks going horizontally and vertically. They meet it up, meet up, and it's a great little bonnet for a little boy. And, and I truly am so happy that you made something for a little boy <laughs> because everyone says, oh, Martha, we have too much this and too much that for a little boy. But this is the perfect bonnet for a little boy. It'd be yes. a beautiful christening bonnet, wouldn't it? Perfect. And it has these wonderful Pico pin tucks. And of course, the I also love that. Uh, Isn't that braided, a wonderful look? The braided uh, Rick Rack. This is all 100% cotton. Yes. Um, I just, we just don't use anything but cotton on baby things. That's right. cotton That's silk. Right. That's right. June, thank you so very much. You're welcome. And now June has some really wonderful sewing inspirations to share with you. June, I just love these beautiful things you've brought. Now tell us about this bolster pillow. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, it's beautiful. That's the use of decorative stitches 
And also decorative stitching to anchor the ribbon down to give it a contrasting look. A nice elongated stitch for quilting. It's kind of an elongated hand quilting stitch, but used for decorative. And then appliqueing this diamond down with more decorative stitches. So you did this separately on an organza yes. and then did that beautiful wide uh, yeah. zigzag. zigzag to do satin that. Oh, that's satin Isn't stitch. that great? Oh, it's beautiful. Now this oh, is a fabulous. wonderful, uh, you could use that as a table doily in the center of your dining room table or your boudoir table in your bedroom. And uh, great uh, embroidery stitches from your sewing side of your machine machine, as well as uh, built-in embroidery stitches. You in know, this would also machine. make a beautiful pillow, too. Yes, Like using the great. bolster pillow and this mm -hmm. for redecorating a bedroom is one day I great. would like to do. Yes, it would be great. I don't seem to ever seem to have time to do that. But I, and these <laughs> colors are so Now we just drag wonderful. everything out every year and go, yeah, we'll use this one yeah, more year. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's easier that way, isn't it? This is fabulous. Is this a glasses case? That's another. That's an eyeglass case, and again oh. on the Silk de Bioni, great little applique. We've anchored that down with an applique look there. I love it. It's very pretty. And again, look at there's those Pico pin tucks right there, the like a cording. You know, this is gift giving for everybody on your list that it's has perfect. glasses. I love it. Perfect. And this is a little handkerchief. And a little hanky again with the same use of the uh, organza being appliqued down with decorative stitches on the ap organza to begin with. You know, oh, we were book. offset, and they were ironing that little bookmark, oh. and they couldn't believe that someone could embroider on grosgrain ribbon. Oh, and you ha is this the, are those the little French knots, yes. or is that the that um, wonderful? That's colonial? From, that's a oh, French beautiful. knot, and uh, that's on one of the embroidery cards from And you embroider on grosgrain ribbon. It's yes. so beautiful, and of course, you know how much I love covers, and this happens yeah. to be for a journal, I yes. think, isn't it? It just opens and ties. What, yes. These, this is just, start yeah. your holiday a gift giving yeah. right now. You know, that okay. journal is interesting. One of the ladies that uh, works with Brother, her mother-in-law just passed away, and they found that she'd kept a journal for her entire married life. And so to make a case yeah. like this, talk yeah. about something special. Yeah. Okay, this beautiful. And of course, every uh, boudoir needs a cute little afghan to put there to uh, give you a little bit of warmth while you're uh, getting ready for the day or reading a book in the evening. So or again, that's more grow green ribbon. This could be done in, in any color, couldn't it? Nice yes. little warm coverlet and this yes. wonderful. Isn't that robe. great? Oh, this is so much fun out this of the is, silk charmeuse. This is a, great. A little robe and a gown. Yeah. This wonderful quilting and the beautiful, beautiful machine embroidery. Now, you know, this looks like it came out of one of those really pricey boutiques. Doesn't it? Oh, I mean, really, yeah. sort of in a New York specialty yeah, show. That's store. great. This is so pretty. June, yeah. thank you so much for these beautiful inspirations. It's been wonderful. And now June has a really fun, so quick, so easy project for you. June, I am completely fascinated by this bonnet. Would you just kind of tell us uh, what you've done here? And these are the Pico Pin Tucks, once again, but made in a little girl bonnet. That's right. Okay. And we've added the decorative stitching between the channel of the Pico Pin Tucks. And the and, lace. And the lace. But here's what and I want right to show And then right down the viewers. middle, look at that. We've monogrammed it with the little child's name. Lori. And then Lori. And then we've taken mm -hmm. L. Okay. And we've this. repeated the L's so that they are repeated in a column and also mirror imaged and connected. And now it really doesn't look like those L's anymore, but it's a beautiful look. And it's sort of like the artist's, you know, tessellation. I really think it's quite interesting. This is fascinating. Very. I thought that was just a beautiful machine right. embroidery design, but it's her little monogram. That's right. Now I have to show the back. Yes. And there on the back, we've created uh, a monogram of the baby's uh, name and the birth date and also uh, surrounded it with the flowers. See, you've taken that beautiful little boy bonnet and turned it into an unbelievable little girl bonnet. Perfect. Well, show us how you did that. Well, look, you know, any good project needs lots of decorations, uh, decorations, instructions. <laughs> so um, I'm reading decorative stitching. Um, so here we have an outline of what we're going to achieve, the measurements for uh, the back of the bonnet and the uh, bar across the top. And of course, our stitch settings as well. And that's a stitch out of the Lori. And, and that's the, uh, a stitch out of how it looks. Wonderful L that you've. And uh, you can see you do, lots of different ways. This is just two L's and then a column of decorative stitches. And this is within the sewing side of a sewing machine. You can also create something like this in, a, in the software program that many people have to go with their embroidery machines. Okay. Uh, just to start out with, you'll see we've uh, the back of the hat has the um, 
frame pattern with the, the date and the initials. And of course, we've marked it and added some more decorative stitching. And again, the Pico pin tucks along the columns to kind of uh, offset it and show it off for you. And here across the top of the bonnet, again, those good use of the L's and the lorry and, of course, the marking for oh, the pinchucks. You put the lorry and the L's and then you marked it because you're going to fold right. those. Then we're going to fold here okay. along this line okay. so I know where to put my Pico pin tucks and see how that's evenly spaced. I just love the way this looks. It's really and kind I of a mystery. I love it, too. It's yeah. fascinating. It's just great. More decorative stitches here. And then, of course, this is how it starts to look. And this is how it looks on the back. And of course, here's the finished look. And um, you can see how we've connected the lacing with more of the Pico pin tucking. And it's a great look. Your viewers will absolutely love making something like this. And this, let's look at this bonnet one more time. Okay, the little top has the uh, decorative, almost like a feather stitch, but not really a feather stitch. It has the Pico pin tucks, that wonderful tessellation or whatever name you would yeah. call it with the L's repeated yeah. and twisted and turned. Isn't it wonderful? The lace, and this is especially nice in the back yeah. with the little um, date of birth and the monogram of the little girl. Right. What a wonderful, wonderful gift. And actually you could do that with the date of a christening or anything or the birth or right. oh, I just love it oh June thank you so very You're much welcome. for being here it's always a pleasure to have you thank you and now we have some wonderful doll dresses for you I'm so happy to have as my guest today Amy Rhine. Amy is project manager for Middleton Doll. Amy, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I am so excited to be here. Well, as you can see, I just couldn't resist picking up this baby, which it really is a doll, although it looks just I, like a baby. We treat them like babies, yeah, yeah, but they really are dolls. And Amy, I can't wait to hear what you're going to say about doll dressing. Well, what I'd like to talk about is some simple ways to uh, create very nice looking outfits uh, for your dolls doing simple things, um, but there are a few things you need to know first. And I think I'm going to show yeah, on this before arm. <laughs> we start anything. Okay, now I'm going to pull this baby's yes. uh, sleeve up here to show this type of doll arm. Uh, different babies have different kinds of bodies, and this one has a, a soft cloth body skin, and it comes down the arm a little bit, which causes some challenges when you're choosing fabrics. And sleeve, yes. sleeve treatments too. Yes. Now this baby, I think, has that same cloth, even though I can't pull her sleeve up. Yes, it's she has the same. that same cloth that comes yes. over here, doesn't she? Mm -hmm. But this baby has that's a full vinyl arm, and that what's nice about that is it gives you the opportunity to do a lot more things with the style of outfit that you choose. Because you don't have the challenge of having to, to cover, cover that. But now you've got all the tricks to show our yes. viewers how to yes, do I that. Do. Okay, now I have to hold this baby again. Okay, huh? okay, if you don't mind. Okay, go ahead. All right. <laughs> uh, first of all, if you're working with a doll that has uh, vinyl arms, it's really easy, just like working with any other clothing. You can make a sheer, uh, a sheer sleeve, nothing under it, really simple, gives you a nice puffy look and uh, nothing shows through because it's all vinyl. Okay. If you have a vinyl or if you have a body skin that you want to cover up, one of the options is to go ahead and put satin to the back of it. Now that doesn't give it as much poofiness, but it's one of the ways to cover it up and still have some sheer on your sleeve. Uh, another option that you can do is if you have a body skin that maybe is white and you want it to look more like skin, you can go ahead and, and put the sheer on the front, but on the back, you can add a knit, uh, a knit neutral I mean, that I looks like that skin. Was fascinating that you puffed up your sheer yes. and used a flat right. sleeve pattern, which it really doesn't look like you've got a sleeve lining under there right. at all, does it? It's supposed to look like the skin. Oh, and it does. Yes. <laughs> so those are three kinds of things that you can do to try to make it look like a real baby. Well, oh, this do looks like real baby, so. <laughs> You know, that's how I got started in sewing, was making doll clothes when I was five years old. I could cut and snip and tie on with a rubber band, and but that's how I fell in love with sewing, was with doll clothes. So many, I bet, of our viewers could say the same yes, thing. Yes, I think so. 
Uh, the fabric, I think you're going to show us. Yes, fabric, uh, to make it easy and to be able to create really great things, that you can choose fabrics that do a lot of the work for you. And you can Such see- Such as this yes, you can adorable see eyelet skirt. Yes. Absolutely. And you can choose different kinds of eyelets. You could choose an eyelet that has a beading in it, like this one, and add ribbons to it. And because this is a longer lace, you could make a whole skirt out of that for that a bigger That makes it doll. very easy. Yes. <laughs> Oh, and this is so absolutely yes. precious right here. I think our little baby's trying to touch our sewing machine, actually. Mm -hmm. They're okay. starting early. <laughs> you know, that's the truth. Yes. I heard a little beep over here, and I looked, and my baby's hand was over yes. there trying to do that embroidery uh, machine. I, I think so. It. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, with this baby, you can see you can just simply add some lace to it, and right away you have a very nice yoke, or you also have a bonnet there. Kind of the little overlay look, which we've loved in heirloom sewing forever. Yes. And I love the overlay on the bonnet mm -hmm. too. You got your little satin, and there are a few little pearls and sequins. Yes. And every little girl I know loves pearls and sequins yes, on definitely. her doll. Definitely, very nice. And her little booties are so cute. Okay, uh, you know what? Here's another um, overlay kind of too, Amy, on this beautiful baby that's an overlay around the waist. Right, it's another place to apply an overlay. So uh -huh. she has it on her sleeve and she also has it around her waist. And, and you can see there are other options too that you can add to a waist and then you have a very nice outfit and it's very quick. And do you know, I think doll dressing is one of the most fun ways in the world to try a new technique heirloom sewing, you know, you've got a baby doll, you have a baby doll that needs a dress. Go ahead and try that heirloom technique on a doll dress. And you know, another thing about dolls, uh, babies, trying to run that machine. Honey, it's a, you're a little young. <laughs> <laughs> but another thing is they always like the color. They always like the way it fits. And even if you, um, you know, it wasn't so perfect, they just think it's perfect and they never outgrow it. That, and they don't that's get dirty. A good thing. Oh, it's a wonderful <laughs> thing. Oh, Amy, thank you so much for these wonderful tips on doll dress. Thanks. And now I have a quilting segment to share with you. I absolutely love this quilt. It is black linen. It has the wonderful hot pink and green and yellow and lavender on it. When I look at this quilt, I really think about my older elementary age uh, granddaughters and my teenage granddaughters. This is a real quilt. If you want to make somebody happy in that age category, I think this is the one. Also, we have the traditional heirloom sewing techniques done in wonderful heavy linen and these wonderful, fabulous colors. So this is another way, if you love heirloom sewing, to go in a different route, so to speak. Now, the technique we're going to talk about today is one of my all-time favorites shark's teeth. Since black on black is a little hard to see, I'm going to slip my shish kebab stick under there. Do you see the little points? These are the shark's teeth, which you have loved so much through the years in heirloom sewing, done in this wonderful black linen, stitched in black, of course. This also is linen bias. It's called shaped bias. And instead of using a lace-shaped heart, we've used a hot pink linen. Isn't this fun? When I first started doing um, shark's teeth, or when I first saw the antique petticoat in a mall in Huntsville, Alabama, I can still remember the day that I saw it. It was way up high, and I had to have the lady take one of those sticks to get it down. I thought, that's the hardest technique in the universe. I could never do that. Well, guess what? We now have an easy way of doing it, and it isn't so hard. The first thing you do when you're going to do shark's teeth is work with a template. I have solid lines and dotted lines. The solid lines are to fold and the dotted lines are to sew. Now, do you see this little, um, these little lines in here that look a little like a Christmas tree? Well, those are the lines that you're going to clip. You're going to cut. Now, let me show you how it happens. All right, here we've transferred the template onto fabric and we're going to fold on the solid lines and stitch on the dotted line. I'm going to fold all of those, stitch all of those, and then we're going to clip each one of these lines right here. I'm going to come in and very carefully clip so I do not go over to the stitching, but each one of these little lines is now going to be clipped open. After that is done, you see here, I've got all of these lines clipped. And this kind of looks a little bit funny now, but it's not going to look funny in a minute. Now then, the next thing we do 
And this makes it really easy. A long time ago, before we had these temporary glues, the washable glues, you had to kind of hang on to it and put the iron to it. And then it almost burned your fingers up, but that's not a problem anymore. I lift it up, I fold the point down, I fold this point down one at a time, and I put a little bit of the um, glue stick, or this is a little temporary glue, you put a little bit of glue behind there. As I fold it down, you fold it all the way over to the line on every one of these. And then, of course, I'm going to need to sew them next. All right, I've got these all uh, glued under and I'm getting ready to sew. I am using a blanket stitch to sew. Now a blanket stitch has a straight line and then little fingers that go in and grab something. Well, I'm sewing the straight line part of this blanket stitch on the same line that I sewed uh, the tuck down. So I'm following that line exactly. And let me move, okay, you can see back there. And after I go all the way across, each one of these lines using a blanket stitch. This is not the Madeira applique stitch. I don't need the Madeira applique. And you think, well, Martha, the only place you had that folded shark's teeth was in the middle. Do you need to go all the way across? Yes, you do. And of course, if you can hold your uh, trusty shish kebab stick to hold it down to be sure you don't get any wrinkles. Okay, that was the blanket stitch. Now then, I have finished my sewing. And let me show you the next thing we're gonna do. You remember over there on that black, that beautiful black quilt square, we had the shaped uh, bias, that hot pink linen, which was so pretty. After I have stitched all of these rows down, and on the next row, I'm gonna have to lift this one up to sew right through. And on the next row, I lift it up, and I will not use brown thread. I will do ecru on ecru, or white on white, or in the case of the quilt, black on black. Now, after all of these shark's teeth are stitched in, then I have the heart, the lace shaping heart template. So I put my piece, and by the way, I did use a stabilizer, a tearaway stabilizer. That needs to be removed. Then I put the heart, this over the heart template. I will trace off the heart template. Then I will shape my um, bias uh, linen, which is what we use, that beautiful pink. I will shape my bias, and that is a very contemporary lace shaping heart with no lace and shark's teeth, one of my favorite techniques. And now I have a perfectly beautiful antique christening dress from my vintage collection to share with you. This is one of my very favorite christening dresses from my collection, which is reasonably extensive, as most of you know. When I saw this dress for the first time, as I was trying to make a decision about purchasing it, I thought, you know, that looks like a stained glass window. And I've seen in, in cathedrals many places round windows which had beautiful pieces and beautiful separations. And I really, really loved the bodice of this dress. And, or rather the round yoke, and I'd never seen anything quite like it. As I examined it a little bit further, went on down to these beautiful sleeves with the beading and the ribbon and the wonderful, wonderful wide lace, I began to see every inch of this dress is constructed by hand. Now that wasn't too uncommon in beautiful dresses of that era, but really it wasn't too common either. This is a beautiful, beautiful wide Swiss beading. It's an entredo beading, which is so pretty with the ribbon run through it. And I think it's very appropriate, especially for this show. Do you remember we talked about doing doll dresses with eyelet? This is a magnificent, magnificent Swiss eyelet, the wide skirt. And it has little cherries just kind of embroidered at the top. And then truly some of the most magnificent embroidery that I guess I've ever seen down here. This is a piece of Swiss fabric. So you can see it was a very wide piece of Swiss fabric. Down on the bottom, there is a piece of entredot, which, you know, we use entredot between the seams on these hand-constructed dresses. Then there's a piece of puffing and exquisitely beautiful wide lace. Let me turn it around real quickly so you can see that the back is just as beautiful as the front with that same stained glass window look and the pretty little tiny buttonholes and buttons. Thank you so much for joining me in my sewing room today. I would certainly like to invite you to come back next time.